about that. Uh, if, if you would, go ahead. Well, I, t I told the administrator I would be a little late and the chairman, but uh, as a proud grandmother of eight, uh, my oldest grandchild had her little eighth grade um, graduation this morning, and she gave a two-and-a-half-minute tribute to one of the teachers. And uh, you met a future administrator. I met a future. I saw a future senator today. So thank you for that. Uh, she surely picked the right family to be a part of. As, as a West Virginian uh, native, I know the uh, um, Capitol family is she has, has great, uh, great uh, history. Um, let me just start off, uh, if, uh, if I could, with a question, uh, Administrator uh, Bott, uh, regarding the Francis uh, Scott Key Bridge. I, uh, I want to, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, anticipated uh, that federal funds to uh, rebuild the bridge uh, will come out of the Federal Highway Administration's uh, emergency relief program. It's also anticipated that state insurance uh, proceeds and other potential legal judgments or settlements against the responsible parties will be used to reimburse the federal government for the use of emergency relief funds. Could you just take a minute or two and speak a bit more about the role that insurance proceeds and other claims will play in paying for the bridge replacement? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the question. Uh, yes. Uh, we have been working um, since the early hours of uh, the tragic incident with Maryland DOT, uh, both on the disaster recovery and then uh, turning uh, increasingly to the rebuilding of the bridge. I know this uh, issue has been uh, important for this committee. Uh, I spoke about it at another hearing uh, last month. Uh, the president is also very engaged, Secretary Buttigieg as well, specifically around the $350 million insurance payment. Um, ER, as it is written, the ER relief program, uh, does require the Federal Highway Administration to uh, make sure that states are making every effort to recover insurance funds and others to reimburse the program. So we are working closely, um, uh, particularly our lawyers are looking closely at the um, insurance policy what is written, just as if you had a home insurance policy, they don't just hand you a check. There are, you know, uh, things that are required in it. So we will, uh, we are grateful that they will make that funding available, uh, but uh, we just want to make sure that uh, we're not skipping any steps as we analyze what's in there. Thank you. Uh, according to um, the most uh, recent uh, information shared with, with, uh, with my office, with our office, uh, Federal Highway Administration's emergency relief uh, backing currently stands at, I think, at about $3.5 billion. Uh, my question is, how does the current emergency relief program backlog uh, affect the ability of the program to help states deliver projects that are currently in the pipeline? Thank you, Chairman, for that question. So um, I'm going to use round numbers because it's easier for uh, my math, but there's about $4.4 billion in uh, ER requests that are out there now. We have about $850 million in available ER funding. So uh, just for ease, I'm going to say there's about $3.5 billion in unmet needs uh, for the ER program. Uh, $1.5 billion of that is what we have uh, tagged right now for the uh, FSK bridge rebuild. The other $2 billion are from states across the country, uh, from various you know fires and floods and other events that have impacted states uh, uh, from California to uh, Tennessee. You may have already answered this uh, question, in, but if you had, have, maybe you can expand on it. But do you anticipate that additional funding uh, will be needed to address the backlog for fiscal years 2024 and 2025? Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, absolutely. That uh, I think uh, it's about $100 million a year that it comes through uh, the appropriation process to top up uh, the ER funds, and obviously that is not uh, consistent with what the unmet need is now. Good. There's a front page uh, article yesterday on the New York Times that some of you may have uh, read reporting that electric vehicles with a range of more than 300 miles are now becoming more affordable for American consumers, and that's, I think, welcome news that we should all uh, be excited about. However, I remain concerned about the pace by which uh, EV charging infrastructure is being installed across America uh, as the market for affordable EVs grow. It's critical that drivers have convenient and accessible places to charge them. Some states are doing a good job of using the federal monies and uh, getting uh, this uh, work underway. Some are not. And I'm 
going to explore with uh, Senator Capito uh, later, uh, maybe later this week, uh, the idea of having a hearing, inviting folks from states that are doing a good job of uh, you know, leveraging the, the funds that we provided through the uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill, and maybe some sta states that could do a lot better, see what they can learn. But I uh, question, here's my question. I want to be uh, interested in uh, hearing uh, more about what the Federal Highway Administration is doing to work with states to accelerate the installation of EV charging infrastructure. What are the current challenges and what more could be done to move more quickly? Bless you. Bless you twice. All right. How often do you hear the chair of a committee bless a member uh, <laughs> of the committee when they see it's not fair, not every day? But in this committee, we're very bipartisan. Uh, well, thank you. Go right Chairman. ahead. And when I went to school in Kentucky, people said, bless my heart to me uh. a lot. Uh, and so as long as you don't say that to her, then uh, you're in, you're in good, uh, good shape. Um, yeah, specifically on uh, uh, the EV chargers, I mean, I share, I mean, I am a project delivery person, and since I became the administrator 18 months ago, I have taken a project delivery approach to this. We work closely with the Joint Office of uh, Energy and Transportation that has been set up. Uh, uh, we are working with every single state. And so, look, the, uh, the President's goal is 500,000 charging ports. Uh, by the end of the decade. We believe we are on track to hit that goal. I would prefer that there were thousands of chargers. Oh. Say, that, say that number again. The so goal is 500,000 charging ports okay. is the goal that the president has set by the end of the decade. There's about 183,000 out there available now. The vast majority of those are private sector. There are six states that have NEVI funded chargers that are out the door now. Uh, and again, people say, well, that's only six chargers. It's actually dozens of charging ports. And I would say that we are on track. Uh, every state has submitted their plan. Um, there are several states that already have NEVI funding chargers out there. Uh, we're on track for thousands more chargers, charging ports to become available this year. Uh, and we will hit that target. Uh, but just like it's uh, you know, gonna take about four years to rebuild the bridge, we anticipated the bulk of chargers coming online uh, in you know, 2024, 2025, 2026. And if you look at the delivery schedule that is out there now for virtually every state, uh, we're on target to hit uh, that place. I'm not happy about the fact that we are you know, about, um, I would say months uh, behind where we were, but with the amount of work that was needed to get that program stood up, we want to continue to work with every single state to accelerate their delivery. Good. All right, thanks, uh, thanks very much for your response. Senator Capito, welcome. 